Good day YouTube. This is Ian here. I wanted to do another video on the Mandela effect and we're going to just bring some stuff up here. So let's see what we can do. I'll reduce myself. We'll get going right away. Black holes and the information platter. I want to make it a little clearer what we're talking about here. I, uh, in my last video, I talked about the Mandela effect and how a black hole dissipating could adjust information on the information platter. What is the information platter? Well, evolution. Let's take a clear look at the evidence here. Things aren't just evolving one item at a time. They're evolving in eco environments, ecosystems. So you got large systems. They're, that are everything is operating together so the plant eaters and the plants evolve at the exact same time and there's just enough for each not to destroy the environment and it's very easy to destroy the environment if you have too many plants if the plants are able to overwhelm the plant eaters or the meat eaters are able to uh, I'm sorry, if the plant eaters are able to overwhelm the plants or the plants overwhelm the plant eaters, the system can become uh, overwhelmed and actually die out. They, they have a symbiont relationship as well as the meat eaters. It all has to work together at once. Okay, point number two here. Uh, evolution of DNA, RNA, metabolic motors are in parallel. They're not one after the other. The one, the DNA didn't evolve before the RNA. These things all have to work in sequence together. Point number three. There's a limited data available. A little tiny, little amoeba, whatever you want to call them, with his DNA, RNA, metabolic motor, all the information he needs is not inside there. There's not enough room for an ecosystem and how they should compete, how they should, how everything should go. The rules are not well enough set out. You have some sort of system in the background. It becomes, it becomes more and more apparent. And what I'm saying is without, you can have evolution and you you could have God or you don't have to have God, but if you have an information platter and that all matter is connected to this information platter, because you're not going to find with two little molecules bashing together, right, in this primordial soup, you're not going to find that DNA is able to develop. It just can't. Okay, so that's why I'm saying that in evolution, and I guess there's another point to evolution, if you were going to, do, if you're the creator or you're designing stuff, you're going to have microscopic tools, you're going to have a very, very small operating room to make these things in. And that is where a black hole creates very, very small holes. There, It gets tinier and tinier the closer you get, and as you get leaving a black hole as you, further out you get you have tiny little holes tiny little operation rooms if you can imagine imagine you're a brain surgeon how much time do you have you need to have a sterile environment you need to have a uh, tiny tools everything has to work very well and be very very clean and i can see how a black hole as I map out the space-time continuum and what happens to the space-time continuum, how it would crunch down, how it would become more and more compressed. You can see that it would swirl into these little holes. All right, that's enough for the information platter, which everyone agrees. Uh, that's, that's not a theoretical um, craziness. Everyone, um, Stephen Hawking was the one who talked about it, but 
all of science can generally agree that a black hole has an information platter, if you call it that, or whatever you want to call it, it's not destroyed. I'm going to move on because I spent too much time on this. Now, going back to the Mandela effect. Here we have, um, oh, we're going to go to false memories first. Now they're saying about the Mandela effect that uh, they're trying to call it a uh, false memory. But as I was in the coffee shop and I'm talking to some of the guys, uh, we're talking about it. False memories, generally we talk about the past, we idealize it, we immortalize it. Sometimes, um, in some of the cases, we make the villains greater, we make everybody bigger. The villains are bigger, the superheroes are bigger. Our life back in the day was better, back in the good old days. And if you went to the Nazis, Hitler was more evil. You enlarge everything. I'm not saying he wasn't evil, but you, I'm saying we enlarge it. We make it, uh, we make the villains more scary. We enlarge everything, not just the villains, but the good guys too. We also reduce the facts with false memories. We have a tendency to bring the facts a little smaller. And the facts also become more black and white. They're, they're not a, um, looking for the right words. They're not, they're not about, uh, uh, the grays. They're about the black and whites and uh, rights and wrongs. And like I already said, things are larger. Now let's go on to the Mandela effect. Let's see if we can bring this up a little more. Mandela effect. What are we seeing with that? Is it a false memory? Well, the color red is affected, which is an odd one to me. I, I'm not sure why red, red logos, different red things, Kit Kat. Um, they talk about different red things that are affected with this Mandela effect. And I'm not sure why predominantly red. And then the next one I have noticed with all these logos, every time I see a Mandela effect, when they talk about it in the Bible, it's always degraded. It's always a little worse. When I look at the Volvo symbol, the extra little thing they added onto it made the Volvo symbol look worse. When Ford does a funny little loop in the F on their, on their symbol rather than the straight line, like Mr. Ford would write his signature, it makes the logo actually worse. Let's go on to the next one, which is an interesting one. There's a phenomenon with Flintstones. Flintstones switch back and forth. Hopefully this is a correct spelling, but it switches back and forth. Some people are doing videos on this and it switches while they're doing the video. I'm spelling it Flintstones. And the Flintstones change back and forth. The name changes back and forth to Flintstones. Now that to me Again, seems like an odd false memory if it's happening while you're doing the video. If I start this video and it's Flintstones, and I've looked it up, it is Flintstones, and it goes down to Flintstones after I'm done the movie, uh, or after I'm done the video, it, it doesn't seem to me that it's a Mandela, or that it's a false memory. The next one is also in interesting. Simpsons seem to, ahead of time, capture the Mandela effect, and nobody notices it during the episode, but later on we find in the old episodes, we find the way we remember it. So Simpsons is recording Mandela effects. Now that could be a uh, self-fulfilling prophecy, possibly. I think that's the one I can see how they could have a, a point with that. Let's go on to the King James Bible which is another one I find very interesting. Why is the King James being hit more often than any other Bible? Uh, and with really odd things, like, uh, would you... Jesus says in the Bible, uh, don't put new wine into old wineskins, lest the... or you wouldn't put new wine into old wineskins, lest the wineskins burst, except in the King James, where Jesus says uh, he wouldn't put 
new wine into old wine bottles. And we have looked it up in some fairly old King James Bibles, and they're all saying the same thing. So, in conclusion, let's see if I can bring this up here a little further. And we've got to adjust the screen over just a slight bit. There. Oh, I still got to go up a little further, eh? All right. And this is what my conclusion is. I'll bring it right up there. What is happening is fear. People in fear of the evidence choose any other alternative, including name-calling, belittling. By placing the concept of conspiracy theory, it can be dismissed. But this is not a conspiracy theory. No one is claiming that somebody entered into my house and changed my Bibles, adjusted my reality. That's not the claim that's being made. It's not a conspiracy. Anyways, uh, I find it's very interesting. I still believe it's uh, part of the information platter that's been somehow uh, compromised. And I think we're going to see more of this. And uh, I don't think it's, it endangers us at this point. But I do think it, it does show an interesting pattern. And uh, I've also seen some of the videos of uh, them now seeing two, uh, two supernova stars smash together. And now they have actual evidence of a uh, of the space-time continuum of the fabric of space-time, which is more proof of what I'm saying that there would be an information platter, and uh, it fits into exactly my uh, currently my thinking and the patterns of things I've I've been drawing out in the space-time continuum. Anyways, thank you very much. I hope to post more. Have a good day.